All right, I've got a scan on my road bike here from two different positions because it was done with a ferro arm and pretty much could reach one side of the bike. So I've unlinked these alignment groups and added two device positions. So we should be able to align these. Um, so we'll align one of these to the other pre-aligned using point pairs. And I need to find overlapping areas of the scan. So um, I tried to do some of that. You need a pretty good overlap. I'm going to guide Polyworks on overlapping these. And I mean, these scans are pretty, pretty OK. Pretty good on overlap. So we know that, that that's probably going to be similar. The top cap, I got similar data. And now we need something to kind of clock the, the bike. So we've got, got a point here and a point near here on the crankset. And that should do it. Probably works to figure it out. All right, we got a convergence of some crazy sick value that's got a whole bunch of zeros. So pretty much this thing just nailed it. And we have an awesome model of the road bike now on most sides. I, probably one of the things that would be lacking would be like maybe on the tires and I don't really care about the hubs like that much. So um, why am I scanning these bikes? Well, pretty much to um, if I want custom parts in the future, like some sort of custom frame bag or uh, cool clamps for the forks or something that's like non, not just a round tube that I can hit with calipers. That's why I'm doing this. Um, the other cool thing that I was thinking is maybe I could look up um, just like a bike geometry chart. So let's see, bike geometry chart. Um, and this is, I was kind of thinking of this bike, it just is pretty old, this um, road bike. And so I'm going to look up how to um, get all the measurements out of this bike in Polyworks. That's the, the goal of this video. So um, probably going to use a chart like this and we'll, we'll make uh, just a one size chart of my bike. It's an unknown because this bike was like uh, custom in Portland, not custom for me, but it was like from the late 80s. Still pretty dope though for a custom bike. It has um, modeled or uh, internal uh, cable routing, which is pretty sick. Um, and it's got this really cool uh, yoke uh, back here on the rear wheel. That's pretty sweet. Um, I think that's an investment cast part. Otherwise, built of Reynolds 631 tubing by Andy Newlands at Strawberry Bicycles in Portland. He helped um, some of the guys that started Vanilla out of his shop as well. Um, so I'm really in love with this thing. Um, I rode it in college. I do have no plans of ever selling this bike. It's uh, sure there's lightweight modern war machines that are faster but uh, um, this is this is mine and I love it. Um, also I found with scanning a bike the front wheel can get uh, tapped or when you flip the bike around can move so I had to bungee cord it on so you're gonna see that and the clamp here this obviously has nothing to do with the bicycle itself. Alright so uh, in order to fit this bike to a geometry chart, I need to first grab the uh, axle to axle line and then we can start doing some stuff like getting the seat angles and whatnot. But so these are going to be, um, I can just use like the hub shell here as an axle. Alternatively, I could I could fit like a toroid to the wheels or but there's, I mean, you could fit like a plane and uh, there's a big old list of things you could fit a cone on here if you had to but uh, yeah the hub shell 
will be perfectly adequate. And we're just going to pick on a polygonal model, and PolyWorks did a pretty good job of fitting that. Whoops, I'm going to definitely name these for one of the first times in my life. I'm actually going to name this something better than Cylinder 2. Um, yeah, it's two different scans. I don't. I like to try to get a little extra coverage there. Let me see. Hold and shift, and there we go. That looks pretty good. So, so cylinder one. Um, it's my front axle. Sweet. And cylinder two. Rear axle. Sweet. That's awesome. Now we can. Um, Let's see. From object cylinder axes. Um, actually, yeah, we might need to do a little bit of projection of the center line of the bike here. Um, yeah, hang tight. We're, we'll figure that out. Because, yeah, that's going to be. Yeah, we're going to have to project, I think, from the, the center of these things. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Maybe we need to rethink that a little bit. Probably, um, probably just go like plane to plane from. So I'll just grab like a little, little plane here. So yeah, because I, I didn't really scan the. Whoops, I didn't really scan like that well on the um, like the hubs. It wasn't really I don't know. wasn't really focused on that I guess, and so. Let me, uh, what am I doing here? Let's um, select none. Cool. Let's grab a plane. So we so we need something to bisect the hub. I'm gonna grab a plane out of this part of the uh, dropout. And we'll do that on this side as well. Actually, on the front wheel we can do it off of here, but on the back it's occluded by um, actually, we did pretty good on the hub on that. We could fit a couple cones there. We might, we might try that out. So I'll, I'll do this as a backup plan. And I'd, I'd rather fit some cones. I don't like these planes. They do give us spacing to go ding ding and say there's a center point here somewhere. And then, of course, it's pretty cool. Actually, you can see it in the scan very well that. Um, you know, a rear wheel. So the center point is like probably center where this tire is. That's the, that would be at least the goal, right? When you dish the wheel, the spokes on the drive side of the wheel are very like, um, the, the rim is centered on the rear axle, but the, the, uh, the spokes are not symmetrically dished. So this, it's called dish of the wheel. Now the front wheel, you know, the, the this side, the, the spokes are more out there at a, at a lesser angle than on this side. They're really, really, really tight. Can, you know, they run straight to the hub, and this one they kind of splay out more. That's stronger, and on, on, it has to be this way to fit the cassette. But on the front wheel, you can see, you can just kind of see it from here. These are, this is a symmetrical build, and that's pretty ideal, right? We would not really want this scenario, but kind of have to have it to uh, fit all those gears over there. This is a 10-speed uh, Shimano 105 equipped bike. Anyway, so we'll do like um, plane plane. So make a plane from objects and we do the... Um, yeah, let's, let's create an average of those. Where did that one go? Did it create one? Mm, that wasn't what I expected. Let's do, let's, yeah, we want like a plane from like the uh, center point of these things. That's what we we want. So let's see what that looks like. Did it? Value must be spec center point one. No, maybe, maybe. 
Maybe we could say rear axle. No, nope. That's, that would be too easy. So let's do flatman plane. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Let's see. Let's see if that works. Mm. All right. I gotta figure that out, and I don't want to put you through the pain of watching this. So hang on. So I need a line from the cent you know, the center point of this wheel to the center point of this wheel, just a straight line, center to center. And it's really the, the center of these two hubs that we've established, but finding that center point, the sort of axis of the bike, one of the axes of, of the bike frame, we're going to need a point here. So a cylinder is kind of like a line with a diameter swept across it. Across it. And I, I can't really draw a line from a cylinder to a cylinder because where where would the line begin and end and also because of the the way that my rear hub works I doubt that that cylinder is actually um, centered in the in the bike frame so I think like the wheel the the rim that the tire sits on is but I think that the cylinder that I'm extracting from this scan data is probably not in the center of that. So, um, so the way I'm going to do it is is probably just find some planes um, and do a plane on one side and a plane on the other, and then and then grab a center plane. And, and so, like, there's kind of two ways to do it on the rear wheel one way to do it on the front so let me do that real quick so i'm going to again pick on a <clears throat> polygonal model now i'm actually going to just use the dropout of the bike because that's looking pretty flat on both sides here and um if the frame's worth a worth a darn then the wheel should be pretty centered in between the dropouts so i'm i'm gonna grab a little bit more of that plane and we're going to name that uh, I'm going to start naming these things to get crazy here so left rear dropout plane this is just for kind of organization no I didn't mean to select anything all right and, and we're going to fit another plane of this be right rear um suppose maybe because it's a craft i should be using like starboard and port side or something but there's no driver's side drive side drive side of the bike yeah drive side i like that Ooh, nice extraction polyworks that was good so we'll name that um right rear dropout plane we will confirm that yes correct excellent so now in between left rear dropout and right rear dropout or drive side and non-drive side we're going to create a plane and we're going to go back to our tree view and i'm going to select both of these at the same time and i'll choose from objects average of planes create and it'll create plane one which again i should have named it I'm really bad about naming stuff this is going to be rear rear wheel center plane. All right. So this should be this plane that exists here should be in the center of the wheel. And now what I'm curious about is is it in the center? Um, so if I use the the braking surface of the rim is the rear center pane is it centered um, the same as the the if this braking surface was a plane on this side and on the other side and then we made a center plane between those is that the same as this 
between the but is that the same plane or what's the distance between that plane and the the plane that I just created in between the dropouts so I'm gonna definitely do that um, I just I kind of really like curious about that so um, see what polyworks can grab holy cow it grabbed the whole thing that is sweet okay so that's gonna be um, rear rim left plane I'm gonna try to remember to name these things once in a while oh my whole experience I've never named anything in polyworks I just plane one everything um, Holy cow, it grabbed, it grabbed most of that. And we're gonna give it, I'm gonna do the old shift click and add, say, no, you get that whole plane. Now this, I mean, I don't know, which those little tiny, um, yeah, that's pretty crap. That, that plane's looking pretty crap compared to these nice big ones on the rim here. Um, man, those are just, Honking. Those are sweet. What's the flatness of my my rim? Like, what's the? Oh man, we're in millimeters here. It's uh, it's uh, out by a whole millimeter. I mean, I don't know. Is that shocking on a um, on a average like a 700 C, so like 622 millimeter or whatever? Um, Brim is that is being a millimeter out shocking to anybody? But it wouldn't be true. Let's see what the other side says. So that's the they ought to be. Hopefully they're pretty similar. Uh, well, we got the old point six six six. So you know the devils at work on this side of the rim here. So point six 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 millimeters out. Um, all right, well, whatever. That, that's interesting, but I don't think that changes much. For I mean, how I'm gonna ride the bike is gonna be the same. Oh man, there it was. I see. I didn't name it again. So it's a rim, rim center plane, a rear rim center plane. Why am I doing all this? Well, like I said, I really just needed the. Um, I trust that a whole lot more than, than the dropouts because I just don't like the amount of information that I grabbed here. Actually, yeah, that's it's just kind of garbage. Is there a way to, um, is there a way to, hmm, let's see. Yeah, you can't really advise that on the fly. Anyways, okay, so we will, we're gonna test the difference between the rear wheel center plane and the rear rim center plane. So this is gonna be really interesting. So we'll just grab a distance between those two and we'll create that distance. And that distance was 0.348 millimeters, which is um, not surprising at all. So if the wheel, uh, even if my dropout measurement was just, let's say just spot on, right? Like this, this plane on the dropout to that plane on the dropout was just, we knew that was the datum or whatever is perfect. Then the rim being um, dished incorrectly by 0.34 millimeters uh, would not surprise me in the least. Like, I mean, I don't know what the tolerance is on this kind of stuff. I don't work in the bike industry or anything, but I think that's not, I mean, it doesn't, if someone told me that, I'd just be like, oh yeah, sounds about right. Um, so any, anyways, that's cool and interesting. I think what I'll do is I'm probably going to use the rim center plane because I, I would, there was a lot more like meat there and um, I guess well I am trying to figure out you know frame 
uh, the frame, but really up here on the on the front wheel, I, I'm gonna have to go off the rim because I don't really there's not anything flat here. I mean, you could argue that I could try to do something here, but there's nothing. There's gonna be nothing to grab a center point, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use that uh, rear rim center plane, cool, and we'll just uh, do a little tidying up now. I'm kind of dragging ass on getting this done, so let me let me try to fly through this. I'm gonna grab this rim. Oh man, come on, Polyworks. There it is. I grabbed about 90% of it, and we're just gonna tell it you you almost made it. Oh come on! Seriously, they did a like an amazing extraction on that first try. What what is going on here? What on earth? It, it acts like it doesn't know. Come on. Okay, this is getting... I mean, you had an amazing extraction the first time. Hmm. That sucks. Why is it doing that? Okay, I'm kind of I'm unhappy with how this is going, so I'm gonna try and kind of restart here, maybe in a better region. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't. What am I doing wrong? There's something really obvious that I'm doing let me do like significantly more detection radius here aha uh -huh. that obviously was uh what i tuned with my scroll wheel here so that did not work and how did i get such a great extraction my first try and then nothing nothing since then Hmm. Hmm. Well, we may have to try a little something else here. Haha, -ha, so getting on it. So grabbed um quite a bit of the rim here and I'm gonna try to just grab that last bit and polyworks did a great job of that. This is gonna be the front right rim plane. Excellent job polyworks on that. And now we're going to grab this one and we'll hope for a nice big, yes, big rim, rim plane. Oh man, perfect. Um, super happy about that front left rim plane. And we'll confirm that. Excellent. Now we've got these two front. Uh, left and right, we want to make a plane in between them, so we'll select them both. We'll go to From Objects, Average of Planes, Create. And of course, I didn't name it, so I get to rename it. So, more mouse clicks. So this is going to be uh, Front Rim Center Plane. Sweet. Alright, so, whoops. Just start selecting stuff. So, what does that look like? to us it looks pretty cool so all that work just to and we haven't even <laughs> gotten the center point yet 
but we're almost, we're so close. So the front axle needs to meet the front rim center plate plane, and we need to create a point from that, and it's going to be. Um, Oh look, there was cylinder min points. So if you really fit a great cylinder, of course you could do that. Duh. Um, let me see here. Which one is this going to be? It's going to be. It's going to. It might. Uh, uh, it's projection. That's what it is. Projection onto plane. Excellent. Ba -ba oh, huh. So let's make sure that our selection isn't messing that up. At least one point must be used and selected from elements. No, it's gonna be from intersect. From intersect. Maybe it's yeah. Ah, planes and cylinders. Look at that. They even they got it figured out. I just didn't know where it was. Ooh, and we're gonna name this one because we always have to name them. Except for I always forget what I'm doing, so this is going to be uh, front uh, axle point. Cool. So if we turn the scans off, um, there's a, the front axle point. You can see it's at the intersection between the plane that we got and the cylinder that we got. Um, Sweet. So this is our like our front reference, or yeah, front reference point for the geometry chart that we're aiming to build. So this could be rear rim center plane and rear axle. Those are our new targets here. We're going to create a point from the intersection of planes and cylinders. And let's go back, see if we can see. So now you see the. Um, rear axle cylinder here and you also see the plane the x is like the the plane that that cylinder intersects we're going to create a point here and it's going to be rear axle point and boom now new point there perfect this is going to be some great geometry wow look at that disc that is just so cool um i really like uh seeing all that that's um Really cool. We're like building a bug. We're building, but we're reverse engineering a bike. I mean, that's really what's actually happening here. Okay, cool. So, we, so we got that. Um, there's a few more points that. So I'm gonna go ahead and straight rapidly kind of grabbing some geometry here. This is going on and on. So the the bottom bracket cylinder is going to be. Um, it probably will help us make like a coordinate system for this. And that um, uh, I'd say probably works to pretty pretty good there. We could guide it a tad bit. Um, I don't know if we'll get better than what it kind of figured out there. Yeah, use that. Excellent. Yeah, that's good. We got pretty good coverage around the cylinder there, so we will confirm that. Uh huh. Um, I'd like to go ahead and hit these tubes just because they're pretty sweet. And hit that tube. I think it's cool. I think it's cool more than anything that might as well reverse engineer my bike while I'm doing 99% of it already. Uh, let's see. Did it grab? Yeah, I grabbed the tubes. Duh. Did a great job. Oh, I'm not naming these things. Oh man, so bad. So cylinder one is the bottom bracket all right we, we gotta go name everything so cylinder one bottom bracket ah i'm spilled apply all right and cylinder one cylinder two is the uh down tube of the bike and I'll kind of flip the bike around where you can see it better. Um, where's that label? Well, anyways, this is the uh, cylinder three. 
Here's my seat tube. Cylinder four is my top tube. Excellent. So to prove that out, we'll turn them off and on. Sweet, cool. We're pretty good ways of the way there on reverse engineering this bike. So I said we had a pretty good model of reverse engineering my bike, but really we just have like the uh, center to center, center. So that'll give me the wheelbase, which um, I guess like in this report we'll we'll populate all that. We can get BB drop out of what we have. We can get seat tube angle, seat tube length. It just like depends on the manufacturer. Generally speaking, I've always heard on traditional bikes, it's where the uh, um, top tube center line intersects with the seat tube center line. On this little diagram, it looks like it goes to the top tube, to the center of the bottom bracket, to get seat tube length. So I may go kind of look that up. Chainstay length, very simple to grab from what we have. Um, top tube horizontal again that's a center to center as far as I know I uh, I'm saying sorry I said top tube horizontal so yeah there there could be with this axle to axle there could be if, if that was X on our coordinate system then this horizontal could be an a measurement in the X direction, whereas the top tube center to center would be like a 3D measurement. Um, so it's such a minimal difference on this frame, because if you look at it, it's it's like what we call like traditional road geometry, where it's um, the top tube is like pretty much horizontal on the bike, anyways. But that's not to say that there's not a difference between between these lengths but it's on this bike it's going to be very close I'm probably just going to choose one of these and go with it um, okay head tube length um, I've never heard anybody actually care about that unless they're fitting a fork mainly worried about head tube angle which we're only a few steps away from from getting so let's let's grab the head tube so fit a cylinder here excellent fit I like that ah, and I didn't name it because I never name anything to be head tube excellent cool um while I'm at it I'll grab the seat I'll just um, and I'll name it it's a miracle seat post cool um Actually, yeah, here's like a cool feature of this bike is it's got an integrated seat clamp like built into the frame. Pretty cool for the late 80s, I think, when this bike was built. Um, downside is I won't run a carbon post in it because uh, the wedge mechanism like kind of mars the seat post up. This is a, a Thompson. It's got like some gouges in it and stuff now, but whatever. Pretty cool. Um, what was that other measurement we needed to look at in the report? What was it? Yeah, I mean, um, okay, so fork, rake, that'll be interesting. I'm gonna have to think about how to measure that one. So it'll be straight line following head tube. Of a certain length, right? And then um hmm. Yeah. We'll mess with that when we get there to measure rake. I'm curious. I mean I don't that is report, yeah. That is that's a handling characteristic of the bike, so we do want to know. So interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna think about that, how to do it in polyworks. I mean there's a way that'll be um, 
uh, so it'll be length from from this point and then the like if I if I extended this tube by that same length um, but at the same angle then um, the difference between these points so we should be able to do that with a a projection I believe so we could just do like what 90 degrees from the head tube angle to all the way to the fork to the axle hmm we'll think about it a little bit we'll get through it when we get there cool so let's do and that's yeah that's going to be curious how to measure the fork length on on this movement but to the crown or to the head tube i don't know don't know it'll be interesting i'm going to think about that while we while we do do more so um let's go ahead and, and make a line connecting our uh, oops from objects it's gonna be That's interesting. Not two lines. No, I didn't want that. I'm going to select rear axle and front axle. Go into dialogue here. Nope, 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 nope. We're looking for. I think I'm looking for... What am I looking for? Okay, took me a minute to remember how to do it, but we need to grow and draw a line. Yeah, just know a few different softwares and this one is a little bit different. So we're going to go from objects, center points, and offsets. I need to use a plane to draw the line on, so I'll use the rear wheel center plane. Why? Well, because the front wheel um, may not be, um, let me see, the front wheel could be not steered center, the rear wheel could be uh, not centered in the dropouts of the bike, but we're going to have to, we got to go with somewhere. So, we'll start with that, we'll create a line from the front axle to the rear, and boom, we got it. That's pretty sweet in my opinion. Um, so that line uh, we could name maybe um, what would we name that? That would be where's line one here? Let's see. What's what's happening there? we oh it created uh, I did it twice I guess all right so one of these is to go away this one we'll call it wheelbase what's the Can we Yeah. Hmm. Like a we get like the links. Hmm. 
on it. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? <laughs> the annotation was there. Did I not save it? I want to add the length. Cool. Oh, hell. It keeps going away. But, yeah, we got our length. What am, what am I doing wrong there? Apply to all line. Why not? 955, 059 millimeters. So, nine, 955 millimeter. Pretty sweet um, to see that. So, that's almost a meter, right? That sounds about right, I think. Hmm. Mm hmm. What am I going to do? Go compare it with something else? This is the most accurate thing I got. So, okay, cool. Um, now, um, let's create a point here from, I think it would be from intersection of two cylinder axes. Now, so this will represent our, um, for our starting to get our like center to center points and whatnot. Um, two cylinders, top tube, and um, and C tube. So let me go here. It's just easier to select them here, and we'll create. And that's a that's I didn't name it. Um, what are we gonna call that? Ah, screw it. I'm not gonna name it. Because, so, what it, I mean, what do you even call that? It's the seat tube, top tube intersection. Why not? Cool. So now we gotta keep, we gotta keep chugging along here. We gotta do the head tube, head tube to top tube. And we'll call that top tube, head tube, intersection. Cool. Um, I don't actually think there's any measurement that the needs the, like the down tube just is just there to hold, hold things, I think. Um, all right, so we we can do the C tube to the bottom bracket. Oh, whoa! And uh, we can we can create that. And I forgot to name it. So C tube bottom bracket intersection. Cool, got those. Sweet. I think that's pretty, pretty darn cool right there. Um, so now, what's kind of curious too is like, now we have the um, sort of the a plane here made from the head tube, top tube, and seat tube and C tube and bottom bracket and now we get yeah so we're just we got to do this we're going to make a plane from uh these these objects and then we're going to um compare that with the the rear wheel and see and it's probably like more a function of how my rear wheel is centered in my dropouts um rather than it is like straightness of the frame i guess um if you had vertical dropouts this could actually tell you how straight your rear wheel is and basically how straight your frame is when they build these things they put them on a granite slab and then they kind of just have like little blocks that are the right height or whatever and they like kind of just tweak it like they don't really they don't have measurement equipment that's this good i, I would say um in fact yeah I've, I've like asked them 
ask some bike manufacturers if this is like of interest to them and they just kind of said well like it's close enough um we actually don't don't need this this is like way overkill no one no one can tell basically um and so you can see i'm actually um kind of surprised to see that my rear wheel uh compared to the main triangle of my frame as per these three points at least uh which you could argue that you could do a little more you could do a little bit more here um like i could probably take some points from the down tube and and more head two points and whatever um but just as like a quick comparison it's pretty interesting that my rear wheel and that that angle is just like um that's pretty cool yeah that's like half a degree off i wonder you know if there's like a couple watts to be saved going in a straight line if like my front wheel or my rear wheel is like like dead nuts on on with with the bike frame um actually I, you know, I don't think that would make any really any difference except for maybe like your drive line um being more efficient like your chain line that i don't think i don't think there's any like roll you know like chewing up the tire because like the bike isn't uh, the bike's rolling on the tires, and so the frame could be like sideways, and the bike wheels would still roll forward or whatever. I don't know what I'm kind of getting at there, but something. <laughs> Try to figure this out on the fly as I make this silly video. So, all right, that that was. I mean, this is pretty cool. So, um, okay, we're gonna grab. <laughs> we need to get get on with. I'm just rambling. I could ramble about bikes for a while. So, um, head angle, right? That's yeah, that's what it's called, I think. Yeah. So, um, so this one is going to be from here to the um, to the head tube. Um, now, um, they're not uh, yeah, not normal. <laughs> not normally seeing 106 degree head tube angles. Probably seeing something like 73.414, which is. Um, that's how you know this is like a really aggressive bike is um you know like a, a mountain bike might have like in the upper 60s like a downhill bike might be like a 60 oh don't quote me but like 65 degree ish range and a racing road bike is going to be here in the 73 plus now this is a small frame so maybe you bigger guys might find like i don't know uh something like 75 degrees i don't know um and then your endurance road types are going to be like 72 71 69 ish and some of these really aggressive gravel bikes that are coming out i think it's kind of cool this is sweet so i mean this is what i always thought this bike is like a crit racer kind of mountain road bike and so this makes um, a lot of sense so let's actually let's um let me refer to my report. So, um, so okay. So we grabbed the head tube angle there. Now we're going to grab the um, seat tube angle, okay? And then we'll grab BB drop. So might as well uh, get on with it here. And um, that, yeah, that looks that looks good. That looks um, like kind of what to be expected so now bb drop we will so we'll just do a, a, a distance here oh, and i'm i'm just absolutely worse the worst at this c tube angle I just this naming thing i just don't ever name anything so next bb drop so distance from here to and i'll probably just go to um Ooh, we could just go to the the axis. I think I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any reason that I need to go. Yeah, I can just go to the uh, center point of that that cylinder. So it's gonna give me like 70.5 millimeters there. 0.537. So I'm probably guessing this was 70.5. Um. 
Oh no, and that's the 3D angle. So so now, um, hang tight. Let me see. I was tr trying to av <laughs> avoid having to set up a coordinate system because I'm just being super, super duper lazy. And is it gonna let me? Um, Oh, very interesting. So, yeah, I think for BB drop to do a straight line, we've got to do the so C2 button bracket intersection. Cool, that point to. Oh, and we would need that. So, this isn't, this isn't the one. Um. Would be intersection. Well, okay, so yeah, every every CAD software is like a little different, um, or every inspection software is a little different. So um, let's just say that's like pretty pretty darn close here, but it's it's probably time <laughs> that I set up a um, a coordinate system and, and so um, yeah so that that's going to be uh, the wheelbase is, is really going to be our like our main main point here the uh, the secondary is actually going to be my um, bottom bracket uh, cylinder <clears throat> and we're going to let that one um, ride out so so do we like that as being, you know, X, Y of, I, I kind of mentally always think that, um, Z should be up X, Y. Yeah, this is, this is how I, I would imagine it. So, so now what I, um, I'm going to redo. Not sure if it matters, but I'm going to redo the BB drop. So, and um, and while we're getting, well, we got, if not the same, extraordinarily uh, close distance. It, it's just nice. It's like a little bit of peace of mind to know that it's in line with the frame. Um, that. Um, that we don't have any 3D stuff going on here, that this is a, a 2D measurement as if it was like plotted on paper. So that's pretty cool. All right, we're gonna go on. This is the easiest one of them all. We will do um, Sorry, we're gonna create a line. From objects, center points, offsets. I don't. Do we? Hmm. Yeah. We'll do center points and offsets, and um, we're gonna just do the uh, rear axle to the uh, uh, C two bottom bracket intersection uh, to create a. Uh, that's now. That's our our. Um, Chain state length. I don't know. We don't need uh, both of those. We just there might there might be a uh, there might be a better way to do that actually. So chain state length. Uh, da, da, da. And um, I thought I told that length measurement to apply to all lines. I really, really thought I did. Apply to all line features. 401.9, yeah, 402 millimeters, or yeah, millimeters. Um, yeah, anyway, anyways, that's that's that. Let's go back to our report. So we, we got chain stay length, got BB drop, got wheelbase, got uh, head tube angle. Now, 
Okay, so that would be interesting. So, what I'll have to add, this one's still plaguing me a little bit, but let's grab, um, I'm just going to do center to center top tube, um, center to center seat tube. Um, not going to grab head tube length because I don't care. I will probably just go ahead and do it down tube length just because it's so easy to do now and um and then we're gonna do a little googling on uh exactly how fork rake is measured although um any flaws in the measurement process of that will you know it's like this is about 90 degrees and this is about 90 so if i if i did take the wrong approach like the amount of error i would incur would um be I, I would i'm gonna guess that it would be pretty much negligible i, I don't think like uh probably it's more about like how do you how long or where do you measure the fork length from i'm thinking it's from the um where the crown seats on the fork but that's just uh, yeah again like don't know i don't work in the bike industry um so uh, oh, what was I doing? Top tube, down tube, seat tube. Perfect. Cool. We can, we can, um, we can do those those lengths real quick. So, so the yeah, like the chain stay. I needed um, a distance that's not like in line with the coordinate system here. Um, it's from point to point, and that's kind of the same. I, so if the top tube was truly horizontal, which actually we can we can check on that, but um, we're we're just gonna like we're gonna create a line first. So I'm using the uh, rear rim center plane to do basically like everything, and that. You know, that may not be, now that I'm kind of thinking about it, probably building a plane out of this triangle, like a better uh, cross section of it would, um, would actually, maybe that's the, maybe that's the move. Um, I definitely messed that up. Okay, so that was supposed to be seat tube, top tube, create. And so... These two lines are garbage, and one of these lines is, and then we got to measure this guy, and this is um, top tube C to C, so center to center, top tube, center to center, um, no, didn't want. So yeah, I also <laughs> would like, why, why doesn't it apply to all line features? I, I keep telling it to do that. Anyhow, I want a length, okay, 530.8, kind of cool. So we're really getting there on the bike and it's going to be um, the uh, same, same deal here. We're, we keep doing um, so it's gonna be uh, what was that point called it was seat tube top tube intersection to seat tube bottom bracket intersection it will name it seat tube oh but the seat tube length Interesting. I think the C tube length normally actually is interesting. So in this chart, it shows it reported from the center. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I guess I maybe need to ask a frame builder. Um, anyhow, that's my new my new line and. Um, um that was silly because i also named these <laughs> so i'll just name it um 
C tube C to C. So I'll kind of differentiate that from my extraction, the tube that I named for extraction. And again, I've got to add a length control on here because that's ultimately what I care about. Okay, so yeah, all, all my life I've wondered, um, not all my life, all the all the time I've had this bike, I've wondered the C tube length of it, and you know, I've pulled a measuring tape out or whatever, and kind of got like, okay, I think this is a 51 uh, centimeter bike, and so it looks like I was off by six millimeters or seven, um, which uh, with a, a freaking tape measure, I mean, that's pretty pretty happy with it <laughs> with my guesstimates I guess um, that being said I, I don't think I could have you know this is really interesting that these are um, these angles are pretty pretty close here this bike was always really uh, twitchy fast good for for crits um, turn in corners in a hurry and uh, you know kind of uh, just generally pretty responsive. Okay, that's measured. That's measured. That's measured. That's measured. And yeah, so we're we're just down to rake. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go do a little bit of um, kind of looking up. Probably go Google how long uh, or how to measure a fork length. Okay, here's what I found on. Uh, measuring fork rake so it's actually the steerer tube projected all the way to infinity um, and then a 90 degree angle up to the uh, center of the axle so so the the question I had was was that which um, which angle is um, is 90 degrees so so basically the the steerer tube necessarily has to be centered with the head tube unless you have one of those really weird bottom bracket or uh, headsets that adjusts for that and that's like a really modern mountain bike thing that's not um, it's called like a slacker or something you could go look it up it's nothing that your bike has uh, unless you paid like a bunch of money and you'd know because uh, anyways the steerer tube is um, is going to be parallel, or uh, sorry, coaxial with this. So it it's it's in line with this head tube. The um, so we're gonna we're gonna just shoot a straight line down from that. Um, we're gonna we're gonna draw draw ninety. Um, over to the center of the center of the axle, so that'll that'll kind of look like look like that. So we want the distance from from that line to uh, to there. And let's let's go see if we can we can get that. So um, actually, because of um, Because of my my coordinate system, let's just see. Let try to remember. So if I do a uh, distance from here to here, um, now that is incorrect. I think. Now that is. Um, so that would be that would be. We think here. So that's incorrect, and that is correct because that's that's 90, 90 degrees there. So cool. That that didn't really didn't really take too much work. Um, yeah, I think that's so. You can see that the the um, the head tube. You know, if it was 90 from there, the point. Um, 
point here. Yeah, it doesn't matter like where on here. That's um, that's gonna be my my rake. Okay, fork rake. Sweet. Uh, well, that one that was that was easier than I anticipated. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I thought that was gonna be harder. Okay, so fork length. Just looking at it, it's like. Um, bottom of the crown race of uh, so I probably can't really accurately do that without like taking the fork off of the bike and anyways I don't think it's a measurement that like uh, really is too too imperative but um, since I'm in here and I do ha I have like a fraction of uh, scan data why not let's just fit a plane here Just gonna pick on there, and we're we're just gonna just I mean, this plane is gonna be pretty pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie, and but it it really shouldn't matter. Um, all we're trying to do can it just not? It just doesn't wanna. It doesn't wanna find. It doesn't wanna like connect those dots because it's pretty. Pretty bad. Okay. Um, well, I don't think uh, a cylinder would be any better. So, I'm actually just gonna, just who cares? I'm just gonna go with that plane and or just kind of get myself a rough um, fork length measurement. So, I'm just gonna do a distance between um well this just may be so wildly inaccurate that I don't really care um about it but we will do the uh front axle point so we'll just create a distance there and, and I don't know I may double check the logic on that actually but we'll see so I messed with this a little bit more and uh, basically grabbed the uh, stack and the reach, which has come um, from from bottom bracket to uh, to top tube for stack, and from uh, bottom bracket to um, uh, center intersection point of head tube, top tube, and um, <clears throat> so added all these different measurements and whatnot into um, this report PDF in Polyworks here, which which has all my my bike geometry measurements, which is kind of the the end goal here. So on the bike, it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, it's like uh, 53 on the top tube and, and yeah, 51, some change on the uh, the seat tube. So interesting. I mean, I'm sure they were measuring from the top of the top tube for maybe 53 centimeter bike or something like that Pro probably that's my guess um because it'd be like an extra 12 ish and some change millimeters but yeah so that would make it a 53 so this is probably actually like a 53 centimeter bike i guess i always thought it was a 51 anyways um cool and I, yeah and i have a cool 3d model of, of the bike now which is cool if if you ever need anything custom, um, I mean, this is a pretty cool way to <laughs> collect some data about a a, uh, a bicycle. Um, wow, that's that's pretty cool. Um, actually, on my single speed, I want to um, put a little coordinate system on it and do a uh, a check of the uh, chain line right because that's pretty pretty crucial and single speeds on this it's always changing but yeah any, anyhow that's kind of my my bike and it's it's report in um, in polyworks and you can kind of take a look at those values there wheelbase head angle c2 bb drop chain stay length top tube center to center c tube center to center Fork rake, stack, and reach. 
Um, there's a few more, maybe center seat post to handlebars would be would be good. But anyways, this is pretty good. Um, a lot more information than I used to have about this bike. So cool. Hope you enjoyed. Um, thanks for watching.